All right, welcome to another episode. And today we're going to be playing, well, one of the most fun games. Uh, it's Sega Rally Part 2 uh, by Sega. And obviously, this is an awesome game if you've ever played it. And this was actually on the Model 2 arcade board. So let me see. We're going to go ahead and play this because I remember playing this when it first came out and it was incredible especially when you played it on a Dreamcast it was something else because you know I've never seen like graphics look this good so but this is the actual arcade and the arcade is better you know um, that's the thing with the Dreamcast even though the hardware was very capable and powerful you know the arcade board still had more things go going for it so let's go and just look at this, it's absolutely incredible. And you gotta remember at that time, graphics like this were unreal. And you know, before systems like the Sega Dreamcast, even though you have the Sega Saturn, PlayStation 1, they just couldn't really get this arcade perfection, you know? Whereas here, you know, uh, the Model 3 board and the Dreamcast, the Dreamcast got really close and sometimes exceeded, you know, um, what was in the arcades. A great example of this uh, was Soul Calibur. But for Sega Rally, I think Sega did a really great job, admirable job, porting this over to the Sega Dreamcast. And although it wasn't arcade perfect, it was still really great. But the arcade definitely takes a cake. And man, this whole sliding mechanic, it's... It's just so awesome. Oh man. And you know what's so funny, like, even still playing this now, it's just so much fun, you know? And this is what Sega did so well, especially with Yu Suzuki AM team. They really give you this sense of tension, okay? Here you're, you're, you're battling not only the people in other cars or computer in other cars, but the time, you know? And that's one thing that Yu Suzuki, I would say, really perfected. I would say ever since OutRun. And I don't think I got <laughs> ranked 13th grade. Let's try the next stage. And I was never really great at this game. Um, even though it is like fairly simple, there's a lot of complex mechanics on this. And that's what makes Sega arcade games so great, you know. It's very simple, it seems, on the surface, but there is a lot of complexity and strategy. And the best thing about this game, as with most Sega arcade games, it is just fun. You know, not only did they have the technological wow factor, you know, they were so far ahead. And only other competitors like Namco, they were constantly battling each other. I would say, at that time in the arcades, Namco is really the only one who was consistently, I would say, trying to push the boundaries of what the arcade machines could do. Uh, but Sega was my favorite, and it still is my favorite when it comes to arcade game makers. Even though I really love Capcom, Konami, and, and you know, so many other arcade game makers, it seems like Sega was always setting the standard, you know? And it's a shame that the Sega Dreamcast didn't live longer, you know? I would have loved what they would have been able to do with like a Sega Dreamcast 2. And I know a lot of people say that Microsoft Xbox, the very first one was the spiritual successor to the Sega Dreamcast 2, but there's just something about Sega making those machines. Oh man, well, it doesn't look like going to beat this time. Oh man. And you basically have to like play these stages over and over and get perfect. So obviously I'm not going to be able to, <laughs> oh yeah, pass all these stages uh, until I play it over and over. Let me try a different car. Uh, to see if it makes a difference. I'm gonna try a different one. All right. Uh, I can't remember which one was fastest. And you kind of have to know like which one is best for which stage, but I honestly don't remember. All right, let's try this one. Oh man, this brings back so many memories. And I really wish that Sega, I know, I know this doesn't make sense nowadays. I wish Sega still made arcade games. Um, if at least it's not for arcade games, arcade style games like they used to. 
because with the hardware that we have now, you know, with the Sony PlayStation 5, the Xbox One X, they could do some absolutely insane arcade style games. Even though machines have been powerful enough to do that for now, I, I would love to see Sega return back to form of the arcade days. Oh man, so this car I think is faster. Um, although the handling is not as good as the Impreza, the speed's definitely there. Let me see if I could do any better this time. Oh yeah. Whoa. Oh, oh man. Wow, that slide. Yeah, this one just has really bad handling. Let me see if I could do any better than I did last time. Because the last time I think I had like 15 plays. So I think if, after you know play this so many times with maybe the same cars over and over, you definitely get used to this. Oh man, and man, the sense of speed, Sega just did it right. It really did. And if you played any of their other racing games, like I said, from Out One all the way to Daytona, they just nailed it. You know, I would say especially with Daytona. And another game that I really wish that you know they would have been able to port home. Uh, was Scud Racer. That was a pretty sweet game. For professional virtual business locations, check out Anytime Mailbox with more than 1,300 locations worldwide at affordable rates. For more information, check out the affiliate link in the description area below. And I've played Scud Racer a few times in the arcades, and you know, for me, Daytona was my favorite, you know, uh, but Scud Racer was really awesome as well. It just gave a different type of feeling and vibe. Okay, so I think hopefully I'll be able to do better this time. As long as I don't hit the walls. <laughs> and all those spectators right there about to get hit, taking pictures. It's all those little details, you know, that Sega puts in there that just really makes it feel special. And the scenery, yeah, it's just, for me, it's breathtaking. I love the scenery. It's varied, but at the same time, it really fits. All right, hopefully I could go ahead and at least make it to the first checkpoint this time. And I think I'll be able to do it with this car. Because even though the handling is not as good as the Impreza, it's the speed, you know, it allows me to not only beat the competitors, but most importantly, beat the time. Because if you beat the competitors, that's fine. But if you don't beat the time, yeah, it's game over. <laughs> And I love that game overs uh, voice. And the music, come on. Sega music. It's wacky, but it's awesome. Okay, hopefully I can make it. Come on, five, four, three. Come on, two. Oh, it's right there. Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> I actually got it. Oh man, I actually got it. Okay, oh, oh, it's game over. All right, I'm gonna try one more time because I was so close and I'm gonna do it with the same car because that looks like uh, that's the winner for me. Uh, or maybe uh, let's try a smaller car. Maybe I could do better with the smaller cars. Let's do the Peugeot. Normally I'll pick the Toyota Corolla. And now that I've played the stages multiple times, maybe I could pass it. <laughs> And that's another thing with these Sega arcade games. They just, you know, make you want to keep playing, you know, keep putting quarters in. Let's do this. Okay. Oh, man. And it's just so crazy how even after so many years, you know, 20 plus years for some of their games that it's still the, the gameplay, the handling, it's still there, you know. And that's one thing that it's really hard to nail, you know. If you have excellent game design, you know, then it's pretty much timeless, you know. I could pick up a Sega arcade game and still have fun with it like 30, 40 years down the road. Okay, this one has... Ooh, this car doesn't have great handling, to be honest. It really slides all over the place. And then there's slowdown here, some slowdown. Uh, I don't know if that's due to the probably the emulation because I don't remember the arcade having this much slowdown. So, oh man, yeah. 
I can't imagine if they redid Sega Rally, the whole series again, on modern hardware with all the special effects, you know, with ray tracing. It would be so sweet. All right. I think, wow, even though it felt like this car is slower, I actually get a better time, a better place, position than I did on the previous runs. I think so. Yeah. Oh, no, maybe it's the same. I think I had 12th place on the other one as well. But let's let's go ahead into this next stage. And if I don't make it this one, well, <laughs> I'm going to have to practice some other time because, uh, unfortunately, I can't choose the stages. I actually have to pass them. Let's do this. Okay. Come on, Peugeot. You do this. And I love this announcer. <laughs> Their announcers are just great. As you can tell, I'm probably a huge Sega fanboy. I really don't have anything negative to say. I'm just so biased against them. And you know, most of the times whenever I went to the arcades as a kid, I would always, almost always gravitate towards these Sega games first because of all those things I mentioned. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna make it this time because I kept running into walls. Okay, so I almost have to do like perfect. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna make it this time because really you have to almost have like a perfect run to beat the time. Oh, yeah, maybe I should have just stuck with the other car because the handling with that one is, is definitely different. Whoa. Oh, oh no. Oh, that's the same car, but yet they were faster than me. Great. They handled those turns a lot better. Okay. Come on. Five, four, three, two. Oh, come on. One. Oh, oh, I did it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow. With one second left. That's crazy. Okay, snow stage. Awesome. I'm very, be very happy just the fact that I got to this stage. Okay. Let's see how this does in the snow stage. I don't think I've come to this stage too often, you know. <laughs> On the Dreamcast I did, you know, but I I don't ever remember seeing too many of these arcade cabinets when I was a kid, the Sega Rally 2 cabinet. I did see a lot of Sega Rally 1 though, but... Oh man, this stage feels so different. The snow is definitely a factor here. You get even more power sliding. Okay. Wow, I have not even hit any cars yet. Come on. Where is it? Oh. Whoa, wow, that's it. And it's game over. I couldn't even make it to the first checkpoint. Oh, man. So, that is Sega Rally 2 Championship. As you can tell, that is a very, very challenging game, but... Oh, so much fun. And I don't remember if there was a Sega Rally 3. There might have been. I have to check. Um, yeah, but anyways, I absolutely uh, love this game, um, as with most Sega RK games. And as you can see, it's very simple, but extremely challenging and complex. Now, obviously, if I kept playing this over and over, uh, I think I would have been able to get to that first checkpoint and beyond. So if you actually had any thoughts in this game or any other arcade games that you've enjoyed, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you did want to see more of my retro games, I do have an entire playlist. I'll leave that in the description area as well. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you at the arcades on the next episode. And if you're a creative geek like me, and you want to get exclusive access to more content that I don't put out here publicly on my YouTube channel, then join my Goal Content Creators Group, where you're going to get content like this and more for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Goal Content Creators Group.